Welcome to the Backlash at Backlash.com. My name is Rod Van Becklin, and this morning I was so impressed by Bern Chapin's Pied Piper of Guilt video. That would be this one. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Ah, there we go. In focus. Yes. Ah. I think you can see it okay. That I wanted to comment on it by reading an excerpt, reading and commenting on an excerpt from an article I wrote over the weekend for the semi-monthly newsletter I published for members of my tribe. Last month, one of my friends said Thomas Jefferson was one of the worst of the founding fathers. I took exception to that, so here's what I wrote, and after I finish reading it, I'll explain how it relates to Burns' video, which, by the way, is linked below, along with... Um, links to some of the other videos I, videos I enjoyed listening to this morning. I am sure that were she here, Gretchen Moltmanna would tell you not to watch them, but we won't let her out today. So here now, Thomas Jefferson. Last month, one of my friends said that uh, Thomas Jefferson was one of the worst of the nation's founders. She didn't elaborate, explain, or support her condemnation of one of the greatest men in history. Some of the nation's founders were conniving, self-serving, and pernicious. They would feel right at home in today's Congress. Unfortunately, George Washington was such a man. He was not the man his myth makes him out to be. And I invite you to watch Stephen Molyneux's video on Washington. Again, linked below. And now, Diana. Steph is neither a leftist nor an America hater. To the contrary, but generally speaking, he's a stickler for the facts. And the facts about George Washington are almost all unsavory. Jefferson, on the other hand, though not without his faults, was a better man. Men, not myths. All of the founders were human, subject to all the failings thereof, and none of them were as myth and legends portray, but most of them were brave. Many of them lost their lives during the Revolution, and of those who survived, many died in poverty. Jefferson was among those who survived and prospered following the war, and though he was far from perfect as the author of the Declaration of Independence, he contributed more than most to the character of the nation and to make it, for a little while at least, the best of all nations. Now, in my own mind, I'm a little uh, torn as to whether Thomas Jefferson or... Um, um, John Adams contributed more to the character of the nation, at least during those early years. Both were my heroes of mine. Judging the past by the present. Those who hate freedom, liberty, and equal rights have spread many lies about Jefferson and indulge in the specious practice of judging people of the past by modern standards. Jefferson was born into a world in which slavery was pervasive, as it had been for millennia and he owned slaves, as did our own tribal ancestors. Modern critics, mainly those who endorse efforts to enslave you to their own political aims through taxation and laws, taking away your freedom, condemn him for this, just as they condemn America as a racist nation for the early practice of slavery, despite that it had a long history throughout the world and in Africa, where it's still practiced by some today. A disciple of Jesus. Jefferson's religious objectivity has been used to discredit him to Christians and as a basis for denying the historical fact that the United States is or was founded as a Christian nation. Now, I'm not a Christian, but I do not make a religion, as some atheists and agnostics and unthinking materialists do, of opposing Christianity. The historical fact is that the United States was founded by people whose traditions and cultures were largely based on various Christian doctrines. Those who hate this have tried to use Jefferson as proof it's not true. But the fact is that he was not what any, the while he was not, what anybody could call a dogmatic or religious Christian, he was, more than most, a disciple of Jesus. Quote, to the corruptions of Christianity I am indeed opposed but not to the genuine precepts, precepts of Jesus himself. I am a Christian in the only sense in which he wished, wished anyone to be, sincerely attached to his doctrines and preference to all others, ascribing to himself every human excellence, and believing he never claimed any other." Close quote. And that was Thomas Jefferson. The Jefferson Bible. 
Jefferson believed that the Bibles of the various Christian churches diluted the teachings of Christ, and he was skeptical of the miracles attributed to Jesus. So he exerted Christ's teachings into a slim volume that can be downloaded for free off the web. Jefferson considered himself to be a devout Christian who was opposed to subjugating morality to monetary gain. Quote, I hope we shall crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations, which dare already to challenge our government to a trial by strength and bid defiance to the laws of our country. Close quote. Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was a man of principle, and he was and the worst that can be said of him is that he was human, which is to say that he was imperfect and subject to all the failings and foibles that go with that. Despite this, he wrote one of the most important documents in human history, the Declaration of Independence. Quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Who can't read those words and not be inspired except for the totalitarian thugs who hate liberty and want to take our freedoms away? In this document, he immortalized the ideals that he held most dear. Did he fail to live up, the, up to them? Yes. But don't most of us fail to live up to our ideals? And didn't Thomas Jefferson risk his life to establish a nation based on those ideals? A nation which has dealt more kindly with the indigenous of that land our ancestors and our land than most others. Jefferson Indian Removal As President of the United States, Thomas Jefferson wanted to pursue a policy toward the tribes that aimed, first, to bind them to the nation through treaties, and second, to acquire their lands through purchase. He thought to pressure tribes to sell their lands by enticing them to go into debt, and then encouraging them to sell their land to the federal government for money to pay off those debts. Mm. In this way, Jefferson wanted to assimilate Indians into mainstream society or to displace, displace them with debt. Some see this as the predecessor, predecessor to Andrew Jackson's Indian removal policy, but Jackson used force where Jefferson proposed a more peaceful process. Even so, Jefferson never acted on his proposal, and by the standards of the day, his was an enlightened view. Now, there's more in that article, but... Um, uh, I have some criticism for a um, regional regional director of the Bureau of Indian Affairs and would, given the chance or the opportunity, I'd take Thomas Jefferson over this public official, but I, I'm afraid that uh, YouTube might uh, take the video down if I were to comment on this person by name. Maybe not, since he's a public official, but I don't want to risk that at this time. So. Of course, how it relates to Bern Chapin's video is that it deals with a historical basis for some of the accusations that are brought against white Americans, that of uh, slavery. Come to think of it, I have an article about uh, how white men are among the finest, most noble people in history in the world, and I'll have to read that in another video. But um, I keep harping on the fact, I keep bringing up the fact that I'm a member of a, enrolled member of a federally recognized Indian tribe because of this whole nonsense about white guilt. Obviously, I'm descended from um, uh, white people too. Both of my grandfathers were from Europe. Both of my grandmothers were American Indians. And um, some, golly, a long time ago, I wrote an article um, uh, addressing the question of, you don't look Indian. Well, what do Indians look like? Sioux Indians from the Lakota Reservation who lived in teepees and wore uh, war bonnets and and um, well, not everybody looked like that. Throughout the continent, there were hundreds of tribal nations, and uh, uh, I mean, my goodness, the Navajo Reservation is uh, what larger than um, Ireland, I think size of France or something. Um, there are, uh, of course, uh, more than 500 tribal uh, nations are recognized today. They're referred to as tribes. Um, a lot of that had to do with the racist attitudes of Europeans. 
uh, an excellent book on the subject, which doesn't really go into this aspect of it, but uh, touches on it um, obliquely, is the book 1491. A lot of tribal people feel uneasy with that book because it talks about the real way things really were. It doesn't take the uh, French romanticist view of Indian tribes, but talks about tribes as things really were. Charles Mann, I think, is a liberal, but uh, it's an excellent book, as is the book 1493, and I rec strongly recommend them both, and they're also available in audio format if you don't like reading books. But um, Indian tribes had slaves. My own tribes um, had slaves. My own tribal ancestors had slaves. And, of course, my European ancestors had slaves long, long time ago uh, in Europe. I mean, they, um, as I said, both of my grandfathers were from Europe. And so they weren't here when there was slavery in America. But, of course, the argument from African Americans uh, who um, take that militant point of view and the white liberals who um, go along with it is that, well, yes, but as white guys, you benefit or white people, you benefit from the uh, uh, historical context that you were raised in because there's this um, uh, stuff that carries over privilege that carries over from uh, days when there were slaves. And so people have this, uh, African Americans have this slave mentality that uh, has um, uh, beat them down and um, white people have this um, mentality of privilege that lifts them up. Hogwash. That's nonsense. The best that I have ever been able to determine is that uh, a um, certain part of white society has an expectation of being treated fairly. And that um, uh, this is not an attitude that is generally conveyed uh, down through the generations to American Indians or to um, African Americans or to some other uh, racial descendants. But, as uh, Bern Chapin and a lot of other people have pointed out, you don't see that uh, um, keeping Asian Americans, holding Asian Americans back. And, of course, the um, race baiters will never address that issue. Although, um, one of my ex-girlfriends, uh, she committed suicide several years ago, but uh, she was a good friend of mine up until uh, not too long before she died. And uh, she had also been a girlfriend for a while. And uh, she told me uh, she was one quarter Blackfeet and three quarters African American. And she told me that uh, in the African American community, there was generally a hatred of Koreans. Now, that seems kind of weird to me, but that's what she said. And I have no reason to think that uh, she was lying. And I asked her one time, well, you're a quarter Blackfeet. How come you're not a registered member of the Blackfeet tribe? And she said, oh, no. As an African-American, she got more benefit from that than she could ever derive from being enrolled in the Blackfeet tribe. Now, I've been enrolled in my tribe for a long time. My tribe was only recently uh, federally recognized in uh, 2000, which was ratified, by the way, by the Bush administration. So it carried over from Clinton's administration and the Bush administration, and they ratified our recognition. And um, the uh, with me, enrollment in the tribe has never been about benefit. I've uh, uh, put far more into um, helping to establish my tribe economically, culturally, and in other ways than I'll ever hope to derive from it. But uh, that's how she was looking at tribal enrollment. And she said no, that she would uh, got far more benefit from uh, uh, everybody viewing her as African American than she would from uh, being registered, uh, enrolled in um, the tribe that uh, her mother was half Blackfeet. I don't understand that attitude, but there it is. The African Americans uh, community also has its racists. Obviously, I don't think that anybody would argue, well, African Americans can't be racist toward whites, which they do, but then they can't turn around and say, well, African Americans can't be racist toward Koreans because there is this racist attitude toward Koreans, and obviously they don't blame Koreans as being oppressors of African Americans because Koreans back in the 17th and 1800s uh, had slaves in America. It's a weird attitude. But anyway, 
uh, Burn Chapin's um, video along with others that I listened today and enjoyed. Linked below. Check out the other videos. Subscribe to the channel for the backlash of backlash.com. My name is Rod Van Mechlin.